Hello everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flipped Teacher Professional Learning video, I'm going to be showing you how to start adding some content to your OneNote. So you can see here I've got my Stage 3 notebook open. I'm currently in the Mathematics section on the Term 1 page and the Topic 1 sub page. So what I want to do now is I want to start adding some content for my students. One of the great things about OneNote is that you can type anywhere you want. You are not confined to a rigid structure structure the way that you are in many traditional Word document processes. So I can click anywhere on the page and you can see it's giving me a box. I can start typing. Now if I want to move that page, I simply click and drag it to where I want it. It's really, really flexible and really easy to manage. Uh, and I can add another note, one, another text box here and I can start typing as well and I can do whatever I want within that. I can move that around as much as I need to. This makes it great for formatting your learnings for your students so it actually works for what they need. So let's start having a look at how we add some content. That is obviously how you add text, is you click where you want to start your text and you simply start typing. You do whatever you need to do. If you need to split it up into another text box for whatever reason, then you do so. Easy as pie. We're gonna to go to the insert tab up here on the ribbon and we're gonna take a look at how to insert some different types of content. The first two are new page and new section and I've covered that in a previous video but that's another way of doing it. We can insert a table directly into our notebook. This is very similar to using a table in Microsoft Word anyway. You simply select the width and the length of the table you want and it inserts it for you. And you can then start typing within your cells. You can do your formatting uh, as well and you can see that there is now a new tab called Layout. If I go to that, I've then got my formatting options for my table, inserting cells, rows, deleting, all that kind of stuff. So that is how you do a new table. If I come back to the insert tab, I'm going to insert a picture next. This would be a picture you're uploading from your computer. So we click on the insert picture icon, choose the file, find where the file is coming from. I'm just gonna use that one. You need to remember to click the insert button. If you don't, you'll be waiting there for a long time. Now the important thing here is that wherever your cursor is, if you are in a text box or a table, that is where the image will insert. Now if you have accidentally put a picture somewhere where you don't want it, for example, in the table there, I can click on it. Now as far as the picture itself, you can see that there is a new tab up here. It's a format tab. This gives you a few different options for the image cropping and scaling. Uh, to make the image larger or smaller. The online pictures. This is an option to allow you to do a search for a particular image and it does use Bing given that it is a Microsoft platform. It gives you some basic topics here at the top but if there's something in particular we're looking at. So I'm in the mathematics topic so let's go with geometry. I simply type in my keyword that I'm looking for, hit search and it gives me some options. And it does give you results that are tagged with the Creative Commons license. You click on it once to select the image and then you click on the insert and it will insert that image again wherever your cursor was into that tab. Now that picture is way too large so I'm going to click on the image to select it, click on the format option and I'm going to scale that down. I'm going to put that in as 50%. Hit enter on my keyboard and you can see that it has shrunk that quite considerably. You can then move it around to wherever you need to and you can make it further. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller by clicking and dragging and I can move that around even more. So let's go back to the insert tab. This is where things get really interesting. I can insert a file printout or I can insert a file attachment. File printout, what that will do is if there is a document that you want to include within the notebook, for example, a PDF document, file printout will actually display that document within the notebook. File attachment will insert a link that will allow students or whoever it is that's viewing the notebook to click on it, to open it or download it from that link. So let's take a look at file printout first of all. Select a Word or PDF document. You do need to choose one of those options. Let's go with this one just here. Click on that, select open. I then click on insert. It's processing. It'll take sort of five to 15 seconds depending on the size of the file itself and what it is. 
And you can see now that within my notebook, we can actually see that file and what that file actually looks like. It does also give you an icon. If you double click on the icon, it gives you an option to download the copy straight from that icon as well. So you do automatically get that. Alternatively, click on file attachment. We choose our file again, click on insert. And you can see now that all it is doing is it is going to insert an icon that will allow us to double click on it to download it. So that's two ways of having files embedded into your notebook. Moving along, Office add-ins. So these are add-ins that Office 365 has available for OneNote. There are different add-ons available for OneNote and Word, Excel, etc. And you need to spend some time looking at what is available. Uh, feel free to explore that at your leisure. Now, one of the other things that is people like to be able to do these days is to insert links from the web. To do that, we simply highlight the text. You can see I've just got some gibberish over here. I highlight that text. I click on the link icon and that gives me a dialog box and I can now put in the URL for whatever that link is. I'm just going to copy the link from my web page, my website, paste that in. I can change the display text if I want to whatever it may be, it doesn't necessarily need to be the name of a title, it could be click here, it could be link available here, whatever is appropriate for your need. You then click on insert and you can see that the text is now there, it's changed. If I hover over it, it gives me the description of what it is. Uh, I can click on the link and you can see that it's a hyperlink because the color has changed and it's got the underline. Recording audio, this allows you to record audio directly into OneNote as long as you have a working microphone. If you don't have a microphone, that obviously won't work, but if you click on the record audio option, and it asks to use your microphone click on allow and you can see now that up the top here there is a flashing icon, uh, you know, a red recording icon that tells me that the tab is using my uh, camera or the microphone and you can also see down here there is a there's a thinking icon there. You can see as well we've got a new tab here and we've got some recording options, record, stop, play, pause, length you can see I've got up to a minute 30 which is actually a fair amount of time and some other options there now notice that most of those are grayed out because I'm doing the recording if I now click on stop it's still processing that it's still uh, inserting that okay so you can see now that uh, OneNote has finished processing that audio recording I know that because the the speaker icon is now there and you can also see that the play icon is no longer grayed out so if I click on play and you can see now that up the top here there is a flashing icon and you can see you can hear that that's actually playing uh, whatever it was that I was saying at the time you've got some other options here back 15 seconds forward 15 seconds some micro scrubbing but that's how you can insert some audio so let's go back to our insert tab you can insert symbols these are fairly standard there's a range of options there explore that at your leisure and the stickers option this may be useful in some contexts it's up to you how you use that but there are a range of different options there and again feel free to explore that one at your leisure. That's all the time we have for in this particular video. For more helpful videos like this, please head to c21teaching.com.au and click on the FTPL videos link to see the full range of Flip Teacher professional learning videos. Thanks very much for watching.